Hello everybody. So um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. And today we're going to be looking at using XPath with Scrapey. And we're going to be looking at the difference between using the suggestions from your browser tools. Uh, we're using Chrome or well on Linux it's called Chromium. Chromium is the original version and Chrome is a fork of it. So if you're using Chrome, really it's the Google, it's the Google version of Chromium. So Chromium versus the custom XPath that I'm going to write. So uh, we're going to be using Scrapey and Python, and then I'm just going to I'm just going to show you uh, where I'm branching. I'm putting some conditional logic into my Spider because what we've got is we've got a third-party site being suggested and displayed halfway through our listing. So. Um, yeah, typical real estate site, um, they've got their own ads to start with and halfway down, ads from our partner. And when you go to this site, uh, which if I go to it, I've just installed ad blocker and I don't know if that's gonna break it. Uh, maybe it will. Um, it looks like it is anyway. So here's an example anyway of, um, I loaded some pages earlier. And yeah, so if it's a third party partner site, it's called immobilian.mindstadt. If it's their own one, it's just called Mindstadt. Um, so yeah, let's just look at how we can use the right click, copy, copy XPath, and that's what I've just pasted in here already. So, yeah. Um, main content, div, 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 p span. So that's a bit, um, that's liable to break really, because if any of these divs changed, um, if any of the page layout changes, then the browser tools version breaks and your spider breaks and you're just collecting garbage. But with this, this is what I've written. And let's just go and paste that in. And what, what I'll do is I'll show you in the developer tools. It's already there actually, but um, yeah, if that's not there on, when you do um, inspect, just do control F and then it brings it up. I'm zoomed in quite a lot, so you might have it at the bottom of your page or at the side, wherever. So if I paste in, this is the selector that I've written, and it's a lot more future-proof because all I'm looking for is the class name, demo detail. So we don't care about anything that's higher up the DOM, the document, document object model. So all we care about is this class name, and then we're looking for span, and we're looking for the second span, and we're just gonna get the text first span is this this one so if I change two if I change that to one um, nothing one and then two and nothing happened <laughs> uh, yeah three four um one and yeah one is just finding one and that will get us a price so if we use uh one two oh yeah two gets us the number of rooms which is uh, zimmer and three should get us the square meterage yeah you see that there so uh all we're looking for is p tag the class called mo detail which is uh that and then we're getting either one, two, or three. So that's one, that's two, that's three. And then we're getting the span text. Now, if I didn't do the span text, if I just did um, text, see what I get. <laughs> I get bone flash, which is gonna be the same on all of them. Um, or if I put change, if it was two, that should be, any guesses? So it's the second category, but we're just gonna be getting the text of the name. So we should get Zimmer. Yeah, Zimmer, see that in yellow there. So um, I've put those into my code. If you wanna do any 
reading about it, just put in um, XPath, go in Stack Overflow, XPath, get element by index. That was nine years ago, look. <laughs> um, but it's still relevant, so 51 upvotes, so that's quite a, a good post. So that's the format, it's the tag, then it's the class name in the predicate. So the predicate is the thing in the square brackets. Um, they've put double slashes there. I didn't need that in my selector, but what you do is you just test it in um, developer tools and um, you see here it says one of one. Um, if you get naught of naught, then you're in trouble, but, or if you get one of 300, you're in trouble. So what you always want to do is aim to get one of one here. If you get one of one here, then you've got a very accurate selector. Um, so in my code, let's just have a go across to VS Code, which I'm running in Linux, which is fantastic. Um, absolutely, I, I think it's because it's based on Eclipse, so it always was going to be Linux friendly. And here are my selectors, so if I just do Control B, there you see, so I've got, that's what you've just seen in the browser tool. So that is what I've written which is future proof. <laughs> and these are what the browser suggested. So that's uh, the browser off offers you XPath or full XPath. Um, as you can see, the full one gives you HTML, then body. Um, the not the non-full one just gives you an asterisk there. Um, I could have used an asterisk, but really I wanted to narrow it down to the P tags. So always better to go more accurate. Um, unless you're worried about being too accurate and then not getting anything, so it's a, it's a um, it's a trade-off be between being too accurate and not getting what you want, or being very inaccurate and getting way too many results. Obviously, so let's um, let's just quickly run it in VS Code and I'll show you what's going on. So. Um, I just brought up the sidebar just to hide the API key because <laughs> um, it's not mine. Um, what's um, that's quite slow. I've set it deliberately slow. And for actual fact, I'm using the cache. I need to delete that quickly as well. Quickly delete. Um, that is very slow. Let's just kill that. Stop code run. Try again. Um, I'll, I'll carry on talking while that's running. Hopefully that will, will do its thing. Um, there we go, something's going on. Um, this site, because of the third party, um, I've got I've had to put some conditional logic in to show you. I'll just show you that. So I'm checking if the if the it's got a different URL if it's going to the partner site. So what I'm doing is I'm just checking if the response URL contains a Mobilian, it's a third party site, and it gets those selectors because the selectors are actually different. And um, yeah, this is not working. I'm just going to fix this, and I'll come back. Uh, yeah, I had some kind of internet outage or my VPN cut out. So as you can see, um, stop OpenVPN, start OpenVPN, and then all of a sudden like a ping again. So yeah, I don't know what all that was about. So anyway, back to the spider and let's run it. So hopefully we'll get a better result this time. And it's re retrying Scraper API and hopefully we'll get some good results this time. So yeah, Scraper API and we're we're going via them and hopefully they will get us some results. And this is really annoying because I've lost my internet connection again. Um, in fact, I, because I'm using the, uh, because I'm using the paid API, I'm just going to see if I can, I'm just going to run it without a VPN. You don't have to run a VPN and the API and the proxies. Uh, so stop code run. Um, 
it says shut down. Okay, I'm just going to delete the results.csv. Um, you might say, well, why haven't I put in my code to automatically delete the CSV each time? There's a reason for that. It's the customer wants to name the file with time at the start of the file name. So, um, yeah, I just still need to put that code in and then there's no point trying to delete a CSV each time because it won't, uh, the code won't know what name to look for. So, um, there we go. So, we're back in business, I believe. Yeah. So, um, as you can see, it goes to scraperapi.com and then it, you pass the URL that you're trying to scrape, you pass that to Scraper API, and then Scraper API go off and get it and then pass it back to you as a proxy. Um, and as you can see, we're getting a nice load of results. And yeah, there we go. So it's the um, internal URLs that I just fixed. So price 379, square, uh, square meterage 105. I just need to pass out that space. I'll split it on that and then just take the first part. And then Zimmerth, uh, <laughs> that's a decimal um, a float at the moment. And we'll just change that to an integer as well. And um, yeah, there we go, 20 results in the CSV. So if we go open up the CSV, it's not written it. And why is that? Ah. Oh. Looking in the wrong place. No? Okay, <sighs> something else to fix. Why is that not? Ah, it was still loading. So, results. I think it was um, just. Yeah, it was having a bit of a go slow. That nearly made me look quite stupid, which, well. No comment, but um, there we go. And as you can see, I've got internal and external URL. That's just my variable. And I'll just go back to the code and show you what I was talking about. So response URL, and then if it contains a Mobilian, it's the partner site, and it's got the different selectors. Um, and the only other thing I need to show you is um, yeah, even be careful with selectors because if something on the page is not always present, you may sometimes have five things in a list and sometimes have four things. Um, that alters what the fourth thing is. And here you can see um, sometimes that fourth thing is the date and sometimes it's the number of floors. So obviously no building really has 1,950 floors. So that's a problem which I will fix. <laughs> um, yeah, so just be careful with lists when the number of items in the list changes. Um, sometimes fourth item is number of floors and sometimes it's the year built. So um, anyway, we've looked at using an XPath written by a human. So it's a tag, class name, index, and then span text. Span text was getting me the value. If I'd left that span, I just would have gotten the Effectively, I would have got the key. The key is, um, so yeah, without text, without, sorry, without span, you get that. With span, you get that. And um, yeah, I hope this has been interesting. And don't be afraid to experiment with XPath because it's very good. And if you're using Scrapey, then I think it's preferable, to be honest. it's. It's much more accurate and say if you use something like this it's much more future proof and yeah don't ever use the um, the only time you may want to do is you might just want to get it and just compare the end bit of it just with what you're looking for for instance there you just say oh yeah I'm looking for the second span so there that's actually the same as that there isn't it so yeah by all means use it and paste it into notepad and then kind of <laughs> strip off all that and that's really what you want so that plus the class name inside a predicate so the predicate being the square brackets so yeah thanks for watching don't forget to um, thumbs up because of the algos leave a comment because of the algos and subscribe because of the algos <laughs>